Hello and welcome to Thirsty Thursday Toys! Today's kaiju cocktail, the Kamikaze, is paired with the common Rider character, Kame Bazooka. This drink is a variation on the Kamikaze cocktail. I know in English there are a lot of words from other languages, like Japanese, that have been Americanized in a weird way, like karaoke instead of karaoke. And I get that and shouldn't expect people to suddenly whip out a perfectly Japanese pronunciation. I always hear people pronounce it kamikaze instead of kamikaze. Now, the Japanese word for turtle is kame, so this character, kame bazooka, means turtle bazooka. Since so many people call this drink kamikaze, I thought I'd lean into that pronunciation with my version. A kamikaze is typically made with vodka, lime juice, and triple sec, but this twist on it changes up the ratios and swaps out the lime juice for key lime juice and yuzu juice. Also, can't forget the green food coloring. In your shaker, add one part of your vodka of choice, Add in one part triple sec. Add in a half part key lime juice and a half part yuzu juice. If you can't find any yuzu juice or don't want to spend the money on it, you can just keep using the key lime juice for a more tart experience. Add in a drop or so of green food coloring. Obviously, the more you use, the more vivid the green it'll be. Shake it with some ice. Strain it out, and there you have your kamikaze. Cheers. Like I said before, this is Kame Bazooka, a character from Kamen Rider V3, a show of which I've seen zero episodes. I'm hoping that someone who's actually seen the show can drop us some knowledge. In the meantime, we have these figures. Let's start with the biggest and baddest, the 1992 Bondi Vinyl. So I can't speak to much of the screen accuracy of the figures or really say anything else about the character as a whole, but I can say that I was hooked as soon as I saw the first Bondi Vinyl of this thing. This isn't the biggest Kame Bazooka out there, but... Space is at a premium right now, and this is as large as I can go at the moment. This guy is cast in a harder vinyl and is around 6 inches tall when he's actually standing. The figure is almost entirely green, with the bazooka part being cast in gray vinyl. Paint-wise, we have the red and white eyes, red and silver belt, yellow detailing on the chest, and black boots. I like the detailing on the top of the arms and legs and around the shell, but everything else is just very smooth. Like most Bondi vinyls, this one was sold loose with a hang tag. This guy is made up of five pieces. The head, both arms, and the bazooka are all separate pieces, but the shell, body, and both legs are all one interrupted piece. Due to that, there's not much articulation to this guy. Both arms can rotate all the way around, but that's about it. There's some wiggling to the head and the bazooka simply due to the way it's assembled, but that's not much. One of the major problems I have with these figures is the instability. To help with the balance, they've added these extra little heel bits on this one. This one came in a two-pack, as part of a candy toy set from 2005, and stands around three and a half inches tall. There were five different sets to choose from, but luckily you could tell which figures were in which box. This one is cast in a softer vinyl, but is unfortunately one of the least stable of the bunch. It took me a few tries to get this footage of him rotating all the way around without falling over. It's all about how you position his arms. Paint-wise, it's very similar to the first one. Black boots, red and silver belt, yellow on the chest, with a little extra under the jaw, red and white eyes with green pupils instead of red this time. Like the large one, the legs are molded into the body, but the arms can rotate. This does have an additional point of articulation in the waist. The waist articulation cuts his shell and bazooka in half, and stuff like that drives me nuts. If they had kept the shell intact and just rotated it at the waist, that would be great, but also too much to ask for what was probably a 500 yen candy toy. Though I realize, as I say this now, that's exactly what they did for the high-grade figure. This little guy is one of six figures released in randomly assorted capsules and is pretty neat with a much more interesting paint job. It has the orange parts under the arms and legs that matches the production stills I've seen, but the green and yellow paint does not match the detailing. I do, however, appreciate the way they've painted the bazooka so it looks like it's part of the shell. This guy stands around three inches tall and comes in seven pieces. The body and head, the belt buckle, the legs, each arm, the shell, and the bazooka. It may or may not have originally come with something to attach to a foot to help it stand. Either way, it could definitely use one. Due to the nature of how it's assembled, it can rotate its arms and rotate at the waist like I described earlier. This next one did come with a little stand and also came with a common Rider to match. It was one of five battle sets in the series, each one coming in a box and retailing for only 200 yen. The box top also indicated which set was inside. To me, this one looks the most like a guy in a suit, Maybe it's the pose or the way they sculpted in the tiny wrinkles, but I dig it. The paint is pretty lacking with that rust orange only under the arms and not the legs, and no yellow on the chest, but all things considered, not bad for a dollar per figure. This dude is two inches of solid rubber and came in two pieces, with his bazooka shell being able to detach. 
I really appreciate how they still added detail to his back, unlike the high-grade figure. Now, I just happened to stumble upon this next one pretty recently. I didn't even know this kind of set existed. It's from a randomly assorted Battlefury, and I don't know what that means. I've seen it written as Battle Fry and Battle Fury, but the English on the box clearly says Batofuri, so I don't know. <laughs> Someone help me out with this one. There were 10 possible figures in this set from 2003, and each figure comes glued on a plastic dome. That dome covers a base filled with dice for some kind of game. If I'm being honest, I didn't spend too long looking at the game instructions, so if anyone else wants to translate it, go for it. It sounds like you and your opponent each shake your figures, and one die represents attack points while the other represents defense points. This figure, though, might be my favorite. He's tiny, at only an inch and a half tall, and doesn't feature any articulation, but the paint and detail is really good considering the size. It has that orange rust color under both arms and legs, the painted belt and boots, eyes with tiny pupils, painted bazooka, and best of all, they added a wash to the shell and chest to bring out the detail. Last but not least, and more just for fun, we have these super deformed keychains. This first chunky guy swaps out the red coloring for goldenrod, and usually I like my figures to be properly proportioned, but this dude is fun. I'd love to know the story for the other one, which appears to be more turtley. I mean, yes, it's still wearing boots and has the bazooka, but it's on all fours and has a different coloration with those dark green spots all over it. I don't know. Like I said, I went a little overboard. A little part of me wanted to get every Kame Bazooka figure out there, like that uh, real action hero one, but I decided to cut myself off here. If anyone else has a Kame Bazooka collection, I'd love to see it. If you don't have any yet, it seems like there are plenty out there to choose from. In the meantime, good luck on your hunt. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and please drink responsibly.